we'll tell you about the good, some okay stuff, <laughs> and maybe some stuff we don't like. Yeah, absolutely. There's we, always stuff you don't like. There right? is. Yeah, no car can do it right all the time, and it's actually not a bad thing. To Welcome back to All Things Acura. This is Matt. And this is Justin. And we've taken the show on the road. We, <laughs> that's right. We're in the car of the new Integra, 2023 Acura Integra. Well, Matt, we haven't had a chance to really do much of a kind of overview of the car. Yeah. It's out. Yep. And I don't even know if we've really talked about that yet. Yeah, we haven't we haven't done that. Um, I know that we've obviously been busy with some stuff, but at the same time, it's just with the people test driving the car, and it's hard to find the time to find a little bit of time to get this done. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's our first time really sitting inside of it together. We've, we've looked at it a handful of times, driven it a couple times. So we, this is our first time really giving you guys what we think of our opinions on the car. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty surprised. A yeah. lot, lot of things. Yeah. Um, we'll tell you about the good some okay stuff and maybe <laughs> right. some stuff we don't like yeah absolutely there's always stuff you don't like there right? is yeah no car can do it right all the time and it's actually not a bad thing that i think it's good to be self-critical of your own brand right because you want them to always strive to be the best right or whatever they do they you want to make sure that they're doing everything they can to put the, all their cards on the table so yeah and i think in general uh we're really impressed with the way it drives yeah and the way I think that yeah. was going to take it for a little drive. I guess we're doing, going to do that. And the way it looks, too, I know, and in person, we talked about that um, originally, how the yellow came out, looked didn't, didn't look that great. And we'll have some probably B-roll footage kind of happening as we're talking here. But the car itself looks really good. The yeah, it's sharp. Good. The design, the lines, it's, you know, the, the second set after the concept started to look a lot better. And we just said, wow, we're starting to really like this car. And then yeah. it gets here and we're like, oh, my gosh, it yeah. looks good. Size-wise, I, I don't, I, I think they nailed it. I mean, I don't. You wouldn't want it any smaller. I don't think you'd want any bigger. Yeah. I think they nailed yeah. the size of this car. I'm pretty happy about it. It definitely is a little bit bigger than an ILX, which I was I'm um, happy about. So that was obviously the re this is the replacement for the ILX, um, which is good. You know they they and the five door hatchback, which we'll show you as well. It is kind of neat how that works. We'll show you a little bit about that, but uh, it's cool that they did that in this kind of car. Yeah, it's it gives it that flexible. You know, not have to make a decision between oh I just want the sedan with a with a trunk. Yep. Or you know the yeah. five door and the five door just gives it a cool look and the function and the people yeah. that don't want the smaller suvs right like those suvs that are out there they still want to drive like a car and that's what uh, that's what this car kind of represents so you know we're excited about it we've already had a lot of inquiries people you know every day pretty much driving it checking it out yeah we'll talk a little bit about production as at uh, towards the end of this uh kind of give you the lowdown of what's available because obviously i'm and since some time's gone by and we apologize some have come in already we've yeah. actually had ours come in really early before the on sale date and we had delivered we've delivered four of them already yeah so yep so yeah. it's pretty awesome and yeah. uh, it looks like production you know we'll talk about that later but it looks like production's ramping up a little bit so uh yeah let's let's uh take this yeah, thing for a quick for a little drive. spin give you guys our kind of thoughts and uh, kind of go from there. Kind of a couple of neat things. It's funny. I drive a manual every day, uh, but uh, it doesn't have things like electronic parking brakes. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, the parking brake <laughs> is something. I, I, I actually just kind of hit me yeah. when I was moving it uh, to get to kind of get used to it. Right. right. You're kind of like, you you go to pull like the manual parking right. brake and you're like, that's yeah. not there. Right. Um, but it's the same kind of thing. So we'll do that first. And again, this is the six speed. This is the A-Spec tech package. So this is the highest trim level. So everything on here that we're going to talk about is the highest trim level that you can get. This is everything you can get other than the dealer installed accessories which by the way we have not added anything to this car we right. do have a package that acura has said hey this is your demo this is what you're supposed to put on it uh, which we have not done yet so you'll kind of see the car raw yep. other than i think we added some all season floor mats so there's really <laughs> right. nothing That's, else in yeah. the car who's so. not getting those but yeah let's go ahead and take a first spin a couple neat things um this has auto rev matching you're not gonna be able to see it too much in the video a couple another thing as from a driver perspective it does have the heads up display um which you can't see from uh, the camera angles that we have but uh, let's go ahead and take it out for a spin here I think that is right there is the first thing that I noticed. So obviously when you got it in the car, it's yeah. got this pretty little nifty uh, throaty exhaust to it. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. It's uh, for being a the small four cylinder turbo that it is, you don't always expect, you know, to hear like a good sound out of it. And actually we've heard that a lot from a lot of different people saying how the, how good the car sounds when they're sitting in the car or if it's like, you know, sitting there accelerating. Let's see here. I'll turn left out of here if I can. This is a, not the best left turn ever, but uh, it works. So first impressions, it has a great sound to it. It really, I mean, it's, it's just not too loud, not too 
you know, quiet. It, it's a livable yep. every day. Yeah. I can live with that sound. Um, Matt's driving in normal mode right now. You have the three settings. So you have comfort, normal, mm -hmm. and sport. And does sport kick up the sound a little bit? Does it? It, uh, it ramps it up a little bit, yeah. Um, more along the lines when you start accelerating and you may not be able to hear that in the video or anything like that, but uh, as I almost hit a bird. Um, but the auto rub matching is neat, so I'm gonna notice as I went to downshift yeah. there, it, yeah. uh, it it matched the revs. And I think that's just one of the coolest features on this car. Um, the fact that like on a normal a normal manual, if you're driving one, typically you do that. Um, and I never, I've never driven a car that has that. So I think that's a really cool feature. Yeah, I, I don't think I ever had either. I, I did see one of the videos and I know there's a lot of reviews and videos out there already on the on the vehicle. And I did see that one of them talked about the, uh, that they prefer to do it on them, their own. And I guess there's a feature you can turn that off. Oh, okay. If you don't want yeah, to do it. Yeah, that's good to know, obviously. An acceleration of this car, I mean, it's pretty amazing. This car has the same horsepower as what you find in the previous ILX, but it does a way better job of putting power to the ground, I feel, than the ILX did. So it's a much more fun car to drive. There's the auto rev matching. I actually really like that. I think that's a really cool feature. <laughs> Never like to like push our cars too hard when they're not mine, but yeah, acceleration is great in this car. The car feels solid. Man, yeah, I, I love just, it. <laughs> just adds that extra level of fun and enjoyment yeah. to the to yeah. driving. Well, because one thing, as you're you know, if you're downshifting, you're taking your foot off the brake a little bit to do that and to out of match. So it's nice that the car kind of does it for you, so you don't have to worry about what you're doing to the car. And of course, this transmission is the the tried and true, just super silky six speed that uh, yeah. Acura and Honda have used for a long time. I know Matt was making a comment of the shift knob. He said they could have changed the shift knob. And I said, I said that is the retro feature of the car. That's what they've yeah. had for all these years is that same shift knob on the S2000, on the, the TSX, and they, they've had it on a lot of different cars. They have. It's like quite literally the same one, <laughs> which we, like you said, it's the retro. Right, it's the retro that, piece but, of it. They pulled yeah. it off the shelf and, and, they're, and they yeah. applied it to it. That's right. They sold a they still had a busket of them right in the back. Uh, I just felt like they could have, like, you know, I don't know, made it feel a little more modern, like, same thing. Maybe put, like, that uh, epoxy cover over it, like you see in some cars, but, uh, but yeah. So, probably the biggest uh, thing that I noticed right when I, as soon as I drove it, is how solid of a car this is. The, the, the stiffness of the body yes. is phenomenal. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. Yeah, you definitely notice that in, uh, in it feels like a TLX. You know, I know you drive one every day, but it feel it has that type of solidness that you that you yeah. come to expect. I almost think it, I almost think stiffness. Why it's it's actually higher, and I don't mean necessarily stiffness in the in the ride as mm -hmm. in just the the stiffness of the body. Yeah, that's a smaller car, so you, you tend to maybe get a little bit more of that. But then generally on a smaller car, it's a little bit. You know, feels man. I would say cheaper, but you yeah. can feel the the less weight. Yeah. And this one's almost opposite. It feels right. like it's heavier than what it is. Right. It's got the you know refrigerator feel when you shut the door. It does. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they did such a great job with that for sure. Yeah. yeah I love that. <laughs> See, I'm lazy when it comes to that uh, driving the main. Well, I mean, I do it, but uh, the fact that it does it for me is nice. I do wish. Um, you know, as I'm driving here. The car I drive will tell me what gear I'm in, actually. Um, you know, if I'm in third gear, it'll say third up there. And I know I've read I've read some things about cars that do that. It's like, well, you should know what gear you're in if you're driving a manual, but at the same time, it's nice to kind of look down and, uh, you know, not to look down at your screen and not to worry about like, okay, what gear am I actually in? It's a silly little thing, but it's nice to, re like a nice little reminder. Right. I don't I don't think I ever had a car that had, that told you what gear you're in, in a manual transmission. Right, so, it's a goofy thing, but, uh, it's just kind of helpful, but I, as I, I was looking down to see what, <laughs> well, especially in a, in a car that I'm not familiar with, like knowing like, you know, right. how fast Keep, and what gear. Right, Keeping, just getting familiar yeah. with it. And again, the manual is only available in this trim level. So just so everyone knows, and I know um, and I've looked at our allocations coming and I think, you know, automatic seems to be the next iteration of uh, what they're making. So who knows? Yeah. So that, let's talk about that a little bit. So the, uh, first initial batch we had a lot of manuals they had a lot of orders for manuals and they built a lot of manuals i think for that initial uh run of this car uh but sad to say on our last allocation which we did get a fairly decent amount of integra allocation for the second 
I'd say, order of the Integra. Um, but there weren't many manuals in that group. Right. And so, uh, you know, one thing right. that they tend to do is that, you know, when, when you get a car like this and they offer something like a manual transmission, you know, they try to bring it out with that, but unfortunately, I don't think they can keep up quite to the demand of what maybe some people want. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see if that changes over as time goes on. Obviously, we're still so early on with how cars are being built right now that, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of stuff that can change from, you know, now until the end of the year, really. Uh, pretty much the only trim that you're going to see right out there right now is the uh, A spec with the technology package. The uh, A specs and the entry level Integras will be a little bit farther down the road. Uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but I imagine that maybe throughout this month or going into you know next month, we'll maybe start to see some of those. Right. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. And uh, you know, I, this manual and just kind of going back to that, this thing. If you've never driven a Honda or an Acura manual. Uh, you, you owe it to yourself to, to try one um, because it's buttery smooth. Uh, I don't think you can mess it up. Like if you're trying to learn manual for the first right, time. It is the right car to yeah, learn on. You, it's, yeah, you can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's so smooth and so, you know, effortless. Yes. Yeah, the clutch feels good and um, yeah, it's just a fun car to drive. I mean, I know I'm not like putting this car to it, through its paces, but uh, you can tell it definitely wants to drive. You know, right. it's, a, wants it's a driver's to car. Right. The other thing that I noticed, and we this we talk about what we love and what we don't like about the car, or maybe what we like less yeah. about the car. One one thing that we talked about even in the past uh, when they announced the Tegra was that we really wanted it to have all wheel drive. We oh, really yeah. wanted it to have super yeah. handling all wheel drive. As much as we still would like it to have super handling all wheel drive, as would a lot of other people out there. I will say it drives not like a front wheel drive car. Oh yeah, for sure. You can almost tell like it the, the I, I actually look at the ratio to see how much balance it has, but it feels very balanced, you know, like 50% of the way to the front and back. Um, I don't feel like this car is nose heavy at all. And obviously it's a pretty small engine. So that's a piece of that, but, uh, or small displacement engine, but uh, it definitely feels very balanced and very uh, stable on its feet. Like you said, like, like an all wheel drive car might feel. The steering, albeit that I didn't drive it very hard when I drove it, but it <laughs> felt very on center. It was yeah. very uh, short ratio. Yep. Um, yeah. That, and that's a complaint of uh, actually the car I drive, which I'm not going to, well, I don't know if I, I drive a WRX, but um, I do find myself trying to turn the steering wheel, I think, too much uh, in, yeah, put in sharper more, terms. Right, put more input in it. Yeah. Than, yeah. Yeah, I think that's something that Honda and Acura have done for a long time, especially the Acura as being the more performance uh, brand, is that you're you know, when I'm going on on ramps with, in like a TLX or something, I'm definitely putting way less input than my car. In my car, I'm like, you know, all, all, like 50% of the turn, whereas the TLX, it's like 25%, you know, so it's interesting. Yeah, they do a nice job, I think, with the, with the right balance. So yeah. Sure, sure, there are cars that probably lean more one way or the other. Yeah. I think they do a really good job of your everyday driving, combining it with that fun and performance aspect oh, yeah. of it. Yeah. And that's where I think they kind of hit the nail on the head. Yep. I know there's a lot of people out there that say it's not the retro, it's not the Integra. <laughs> well, you know, they wanted to make, and again, this goes back to what we talked about before and a lot of different articles. They wanted to make the Integra a new version. They didn't want to make a new version of the old Integra, right? Yeah, exactly. They yeah. thought, okay, if, if that car had evolved yep. two or three generations, yeah. what would it look like today? And that's what, what they've come up with. Yeah, and that's totally fine. I mean, I there's a lot of brands that everyone wants the old stuff. Trust me, no one really wants the old stuff. Like, at the end of the day, you know, I think people hold on to that nostalgia of, you know, I had one and, oh, you know, so it was one of the greatest cars they ever owned. Well, things have to change, you know. Uh, with the times you know they have to update things and technology world and update the looks of things or else you know the the most people who never had integra aren't going to care that it looked like an old integra right, right. <laughs> like they're going to say well i want something that looks new and modern and yeah, this car is just it's it's super fun to drive i will tell you that is i think the number one thing in this car to me is how it drives uh, aside from all the other tech stuff or whatever you get right and i, and I think that will go back to you know as you as you kind of summarize the car and, and what we think about it there are some little things and we'll kind of nitpick those and show you those but when it when it really comes down to it boils down to how it drives and yeah. 
that's what we enjoy about a car is how it drives right not what the tech is not yep. what it does i don't care what the tech does at yeah. the end of the day i'd rather have the car drive well and it, it's a bonus if the tech is yeah, exactly, exactly what exactly. you want it to be oh sure exactly and it is nice i mean most cars i mean gosh like all the way back to like 2010 you have car with bluetooth and honestly i'm happy with that i put my phone up there and get the directions which kind of brings me to my next thing like this this one does have the bigger screen so you do have that in the a spec tech package we have not seen the smaller screen yet so we don't yeah know so we don't know what it's going to look like how it's going to function we assume it's going to be pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, just in a smaller version, but I guess we'll that'll, that'll be part to see. Um, so that brings us to the to the one piece of the technology package that we were kind of surprised about. Oh, there, there, here there's go. my car. You're, 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 you're passing us. <laughs> That's right. How did they? Well, you, that is your car. You have it in service today. I do have oh, it in service today. Well, you, first you, you weren't kidding. Uh, I was not. My yeah, they, there was a squeaking brake problem, so uh, they're just checking it out real quick. So that is yeah, and and my car, you know this car feels just as fun as my car, the WRX. So you know someone who is you know potentially cross shopping that vehicle, I will tell you right now the new generation WRX. I don't like the way it looks, and I'm only saying that because I've, I've read some stuff out there about people comparing these two cars and how, well, I can get a WRX that has all-wheel drive and so on and so forth. I'm like, yeah, I get that, but at the same time, this car is much more refined in, in every way. <laughs> so, Well, there you go. Take yeah. it from the guy that drives drives one on. Yeah, I mean, this is, <laughs> this, is someone, this is a car that, like, you know, someone, you know, I bought my car when I was, you know, uh, what, was, what was I, 27 or 8 or something like that, and uh, this car is much more refined so if you're like a young professional and you only want a car that's still kind of fun to drive this is definitely a great car for that yeah i think and again go back to the whole i mean the acura brand itself is the perfect brand for the that combination of something that's nicer than you know ref more refined yeah. nicer than with a lot of the other things out there yet not being you know bmw like or what have oh, you. oh sure exactly yeah and the, the weird parking brake as I go to <laughs> pull up the mechanical parking brake, it doesn't exist. So I, I'm, I get why they did that. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I know that's something that just takes some time to get used to. The one thing I, that's kind of weird on a manual is the brake hold. So yeah, that that would be really yeah. I haven't, I, I'm like haven't figured that it's out. It's almost yet, like but, a, you, yeah, it's a feature that you're not so sure you would want to use, but right. I guess it would work. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So talking about a little bit about the you know some of the features this car has. Um, I guess I'll just start with the screen here, but really nice touchscreen and uh, you know It's the one thing I really like and you know You'll notice is that the screen there's almost no glare to it and it doesn't leave fingerprints They left yeah, kind of like that. I don't know what it is not like a film, but it, yeah It's almost like a, a filter or a, yeah. a screen Protector yeah. that that exactly yeah exactly you know it's kind of like your non fingerprint refrigerator yeah exactly it's it's just <laughs> like that yeah so it's uh it's nice that they do that that way you're not like constantly wiping it off um and the screen looks nice it's nice and crisp it's uh it's yeah huge. it really it, it that not only does it help with the fingerprints but the glare yeah. is phenomenal without the, I mean normally with the bright sunlight you would really find it really hard to yeah. see it clearly and exactly yeah I think they've done a good job with that yeah absolutely and I do like that there's like the hard buttons there I think that's kind of nice to have you know people are always asking for things like that you know I think ease of use is, is helpful like if you're on a different screen you hit home it takes you back or you know the volume knob you know or the, even the tracking button it's nice that Acura still does that um, I know some brands have strayed away from that and some brands have gone back to that because they know that's what people want <clears throat> so obviously no touchpad like in the other actors yeah. we have now just a touch screen in this car and obviously that drives because of the coming out of the civic yeah. you know they're not gonna they weren't gonna change all that which is okay i yep. think this this is kind of more of what most people want yep um downside uh, I will say that we were shocked to see in the technology package. Yes. No navigation. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is and a now, weird we, thing. We were wondering about that, and even on the on the uh, your digital display, mm -hmm. it does say navigation. It has a compass. It does say navigation. <laughs> but there is no navigation <laughs> built into the car. Yes. I don't know that that matters a whole lot today. No. Uh, right. Seeing that that most people aren't using their vehicle's navigation and don't care whether it, the vehicle has navigation. But it was a surprise because all the years in the past, the yep. technology package, the main feature was getting that navigation. Absolutely, and you st I still have people today saying, oh, I don't need the tech package because I don't need navigation, whereas now that's not really 
that's not really what that package means right. much, so much anymore. So especially in this car, and it's kind of goofy, and I, I don't think there was any literature that we read that, or didn't, did or did not read, that said it was or was not going to have it. So here we are, and uh, obviously it doesn't have it. So, um, which like you said, it's not a big deal. Most pe people, you know, most people buying this car are probably not gonna care that much about that. They're they're probably gonna use their smartphone and, and set up their Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. What I will say the cool thing is, and we just, we found this out earlier and I couldn't have both things running at the same time as we're doing this uh, video here, but if you have, and I don't know if it works for Google Maps or Apple Maps or Waze or if it works with all three of them, but with Apple Maps using my iPhone, it did show me turn by turn direction, which typically was only reserved for the car navigation. Right, so it does work in conjunction with the digital yep. display all together. So it's really a nice seamless, actually probably better experience than yeah. even with Totally, yeah, and I, I've always been a big fan of that. I know my Honda Odyssey that I have, it it uses Garmin navigation. I almost refuse to use, you know, using your phone is what people use, so it's just easier and better anyway, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, pretty typical stuff up here. You have, you have all your settings. It says have the Alexa, Alexa built in, the Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, you know, I never found too much use in my Wi-Fi. Well, I do use it in my van, so I shouldn't say that. So, See? yeah. Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> but, you know, obviously phones have hotspots too, but they do connect easier, actually, is what I found in cars. So, um, but a really nice screen there, obviously. Um, I don't know if there's anything else up here to kind of talk about. Uh, with regards to the screen no i think it has you know the features that you mm -hmm. typically want usability is you know from what we played with a little bit just yep. for the short time so far is is really good i mean, i don't know that that this can be improved you know how the layout yeah. the buttons a whole lot right? right and i don't know that there's a whole lot of things that you can really pull that pick it apart with sure sure um you know as far as the brand in general a little disappointed in the steering wheel i know that sounds goofy but i like the steering wheel love the feel of it disappointed it's not a, an accurate looking steering wheel meaning as far as oh, the buttons are sure, concerned sure sure so i really i like the accurate setup on the on the yeah. other steering wheels um so i was kind of disappointed to see that however these do work nice they have a great feel to yep. them and and uh, you know it's definitely not something most people would notice but coming sure. out of the other cars yeah. well, <laughs> it's you, it's the steering wheels tend to be the same as we go through so you get used to where the buttons are where yeah. the switches are and you get into this one it's different yeah absolutely it's almost like relearning uh, you know a new product and it yeah. is it is civic-esque you know to that yeah. extent which i get it you know and people watching this or people who have looked at the civic they know like this car is is you know a lot like the civic which is not a bad thing in my opinion this car is definitely more refined you know the interior in terms of the quality of the, of how it's put together you know the stitching things like that this nice material here it's definitely a little bit nicer in that regards the button feel i really love this this is you know basically straight out of how the civic is set up um i love the, how those feel i love like these button feels right here yeah i um, will say all the all the switch gear in the car is yeah. is solid and same way with the you know the window switches everything is yeah. is as good if not better than some of the yeah. other cars that yeah. we have absolutely um, so they did not you know and a lot of times you find that with the smaller cars what happens is just like any manufacturers that tends you know, all the quality of those materials tend yeah. to drop as you drop in, in trim of course you're trying to make a less expensive car yeah and i will say that with a lot of switch gear and different things they did not shortcut that any no. as far as in the car yep. now the materials you could probably argue that maybe this this you know i'm sure this is a leatherette on the dash yeah. so isn't as nice as what you're going to find in maybe an rdx or an mdx oh, sure. yeah but in the class of car and price range i don't know that you get much better than yeah that. especially right. like you said the price range 37 495 i think is what it is on this car and uh i mean that's a lot of car and that that's being that much under forty thousand dollars, I mean, this car compares to you know the uh, Mercedes. They, I think it's. Why well, don't they still have the A class, but the CLA, you know, where and actually one of our coworkers has that car. This car, honestly, I think looks a little bit nicer, like you know, th compared to that car. And I think that car is over forty thousand dollars. So yeah, and I think again, go back to the drive. You know, looks aside, mm -hmm. feel aside, go back to the drive. It's yep. it is a, a step above when you get in those other cars like that. And I've driven those. And, and there's nothing wrong with them and they're great if you really have to have a mercedes right and you want to get that entry level yeah. but they don't it doesn't drive anywhere near this no absolutely yeah. yeah and um but yeah so obviously those are some of our initial thoughts so other things i kind of wanted to nitpick a little bit as we were kind of we're learning about the car i'm looking around i'm looking i love the uh auto famous auto dimming mirror i'm like oh there's a button underneath there to turn on and off and other other cars have 
the home link right here. Well, uh, it has been staying missing here, and I said, well, surely it's up here, and it's not. So uh, a little bit of a gripe on my part, uh, and maybe this is something that they'll add later as an accessory. Yeah, so, <laughs> so. sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And we learned that about these products. You can't, it's so hard to go through and say, okay, we, we expect it to have this and, and look for every one of those features, yeah. right? There's just, there's probably hundreds of things when it comes down to it. But the home link was one that yeah. you kind of made the assumption we'd come with. <clears throat> yeah. And here we are, we're looking for it. It doesn't have it. Yeah, and trend. that's been a standard. Well, other than the ILX, but the ILX didn't have it until actually. I'm sure. I think the uh, the tech package I think had it in the ILX. I, now I have to remember. I think it think it did in the uh, in the button cluster up here. But uh, yeah, it's one of those things. Kind of wish it had. Uh, you know, that's something that hopefully they might change in the next iteration of the vehicle. I know it's not a little thing, but again, it's those little things that you come to expect out of like an entry level Acura. I know this on the entry. Well, even this not being entry level, you know, you kind of expect that a little bit. So there's that piece of it. Um, um, nothing, I think there's, go ahead. Yeah, it's really hard to pick apart the car. I yeah. mean, and I guess we want to kind of pick it apart to give you our thoughts on yep. it. Uh, love the car. Yep. Probably, you know, it's very hard to to, yeah. to find things that you could pick it apart. Right. And I know everybody can, right? You're, you guys are going to fill the comments with things that you, <laughs> you despise about it. Right, um, that's right. But, <laughs> but, but the only other thing that I was kind of surprised, it does have the digital gauge. Mm -hmm. uh, setup which is really nice looks great and it, it works great yeah i was surprised you couldn't change it and i was saying to matt earlier i said wasn't well, that kind of the part of the point of the digital display is being able to change how it looks right now you can change a lot of things in the display as far as what you see and there's a lot of content yep. that you can scroll through on both sides however you can't change how the display looks You're right which i was kind of surprised but I don't know that that's important to anybody. And I know in cars that I've had where you could change it, I never did after what after sure, it was what it exactly, was. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. And it's one of those little things. I know the MDX has, you know, the MDX has the two different looks. So it'd be nice to even just have that, you know, right. just to say, okay, it, I can make it be my own or be a little bit different. Um, I think that was something that was, you know, maybe. I, again, this is the first iteration of the car, so who knows? Those are things that they could potentially change. Sure, they could. They could add a lot. And yeah, change a lot. Well, and especially since that's digital, I think that is something. One of the benefits to digital is that you sure, can you provide can updates it, right. to it. So we'll see yep. if that changes in the future. The only other thing I know in the back, which I know we might go back there and show you, um, you know, there in the hatchback, there's like a piece that kind of hangs down, and we'll probably show you guys that. Um, that it's supposed to cover your uh, stuff that's in the trunk, which is great. But if you go to remove it, there's no place to put it. You know, yeah. that's my other. So, yeah, those little things, again, little thing. I like yeah. that it came with that. Yeah. See, in a lot of times, in a lot of those cars, it's that's an accessory item yep. or you have to get a different package or what have you to get mm -hmm. that piece, and it comes with it. Yep. Now, to your point, <laughs> they stopped short on the design because there's yeah. nowhere to put it. Yeah, sure. Well, I, exactly. So. Yeah. And, and ultimately, I may not take it out anyway. I'm just saying, in the case that, like, hey, I have something that's going to be poking up against it, you know, right. I want to be able to take it out, but not put it on my I garage. think it's a great windscreen <laughs> you could use for something. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. We'll show you that in a, in a minute. Um, yeah. We'll uh, hop out of the car on. here and uh, we'll we'll get this, keep, keep this going, I guess. All right, wrap it up on the outside of the vehicle here. Just wanted to show you guys the outside, some of the design features of the car, as well as uh, the trunk. I wanted to show you guys a little bit about that since it is the five door. Um, but yeah, just absolutely beautiful design. One of the things that is different compared to some of our other vehicles is the Diamond Pentagon grill. It does not have that uh, frame around it, which actually I really like. And I know you guys can't see Justin. He's the one holding the camera there. Um, but I, I think that looks really sharp. Um, the other thing that I really liked was that instead of the uh, the Diamond Pentagon, Pentagon pieces kind of coming out at you, it's now the inserts. So it's kind of the opposite. I think that looks really good. And it makes me wonder if they're going to do something like that uh, in the yeah, I think, the I think we see uh, a start of what the next yeah. Acura grills will start to look like. And I think that looks really good. Uh, I think they've done a good job with that. Again, one of my favorite uh, accessories that you can get, which is not on this car. Are we putting it on this car? We are going to be putting it on this okay. car. Yeah, the uh, the illuminated um, Acura badge, which is going to be pretty cool. We'll see what that looks like. So uh, that, that goes back to this does not have the accessory package on it that we'll have. Yep. So we can do a follow-up and show you know, the yep, accessories. What those on. look like. I'm excited to see what some of those things uh, do look like uh, I think the design of the car looks really sharp. I love those headlights. I think that looks really good. I love that dark uh, inlay inside. I'm assuming the regular Integra won't have that. Uh, but obviously, we could be a while before we even see that. 
Um, but yeah, I love those headlights. I think the car looks really good up front. Um, I think, you know, being that it's obviously based on the Civic, I don't think it looks anything like the Civic at all um, from a, you know, design and kind of look standpoint, um, but it looks really sharp. The back is sloped. And even compared to the five-door Civic, I think it looks much cleaner. That whole roof line is like one piece. I think on the Civic, it kind of has a little bit of a different look to it. So obviously the Integra being a little bit more handsome of a car. And the big thing, obviously, this being, you know, they're not making the normal four-door Integra. Uh, oh, the other thing I, I wanted to point out was uh, the fact that they stamped Integra into the bumper. They did that on the front as well, which I know a lot of you guys have seen. I actually really like that because, you know, it does it takes away from the fact that there's no, you know, chrome badging in the car. And I think part of that is the fact that if they had Integra and a big, like, long chrome <laughs> word, it would be, you know, a little bit gaudy. But uh, I think it looks really sharp. This obviously being the five, it is a five door, not making a four door. I love that easy access back there. I know a lot of people, we, we actually, I thought maybe it was going to have a power lift gate, but it does not have that. Um, I don't think it necessarily needs it. <clears throat> Yeah, and close, you know, that's fine. Um, you got the little handles here to kind of help you out. Um, you know, I'm sure that's a little thing that some people are going to say, yeah, it should have a power lift gate, and I, I get that, but uh, it doesn't need it. And, again, that kind of goes back to Acura not putting things on cars that can break and, you know, no no need for electronic components that, you know, in this case it doesn't necessarily need it. But, um, but yeah, uh, great storage down here. You can fit a golf club, <clears throat> a set of golf clubs back here. Uh, obviously the, the heads of the clubs would go down in this little pocket right there. <clears throat> and the one thing that, you know, I talked about earlier with this piece, this is a nice piece right here. Um, this shade that obviously covers your stuff for privacy, which is really nice. The only issue I have is the fact that if you go to take it off, which you can, I'm not going to take it all the way out, but once you remove it, there's no place to put it inside the car. You know, it'd be nice to have something maybe underneath there to store it. Um, and I don't know how often that might happen. Obviously, it's a little bit stretchy. So if you do have something that's like kind of poke it up into it, it, it shouldn't damage it. But again, it would have been a nice little thing to be able to store if you didn't always want it there. But uh, just a little thing, not, not that big of a deal. Um, there's no spare tire in the Integra. That's pretty true of most sedans, including our TLX. But you do have I love, love that little underfloor storage right there. Um, and you do have the inflator kit, which is underneath there as well. So if you do need that. And I really like the taillights too. You know, in person, I think those look really good. I, th I thought in pictures it looks really nice, but uh, I think they look sleek. I love that you can't really tell that there's like a light in there. It just kind of looks, it looks really sharp. <clears throat> and I think it's a, it's a full LED, <clears throat> full LEDs. So, you know, the turn signals, things like that. Those are full LEDs. Uh, backup lights are full LEDs. I know in uh, the RDX, you know, still has, I think the turn signal is actually still a little incandescent bulb. But, uh, you know, I'm glad that they went to all that on this car. Um, and again, the, the tech A-spec does have the parking sensors. That was something that an ILX never had. Um, so just, again, those little things that they did. I love that third brake light up there, too. I love that. Um, nice and sleek, nice and long so you can see it. But, uh, but yeah. <clears throat> love the dual exhaust too i wanted to point that out too uh, i think it's everything we kind of expect it would be a couple surprises in there that we didn't yeah. maybe expect or didn't see i gotta say the way the car drives when it ultimately when you boil it all down that was the piece of the car a uh, piece of the whole thing matt that i'm yeah. probably more surprised about than i thought i would be yeah I actually had less expect expectations. Totally, totally exactly. So, and that's probably the most important thing. The other things we can nitpick all day long. I'm sure you guys will too, but the way it drives is really incredible. Yeah, at, yeah, at the end of the day, no car is perfect. And, you know, obviously there's going to be things we want to nitpick to make sure. And those are things that could update, but who knows. Um, but again, the car, like Justin said, the car, the driving characteristics of the car, that is a thing to really keep an eye out for this car. If you get a chance to go drive one, I'm assuming every dealership has a demo unless they've tried to sell their demo. Uh, we'll see what the future holds with the car. And uh, again, thanks everyone for watching. Sorry, it's been a little bit since we uh, last spoke out got, spoke out to you guys, but uh, we've only had this for, I think, over a little over a week. So we haven't had like a super long time. I think the car only has 200 miles on it. So I'm um, glad. Thank you again for watching. Glad you guys were able to tune in. And if you have any questions or comments or anything like that, feel free to leave them. Make sure you like and subscribe. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Sounds good, Matt. Thanks again. We'll catch you next time.